Hello and welcome to DDO Cast, episode 292, recorded live on Monday, July 15th, 2013, around 7-ish Pacific time. We like to talk about Dungeons and Dragons online around 4 p.m. nearly every Sunday, but uh, not this week. <laughs> you can watch us through our G Plus Hangouts or from the website at ddocast.com. I'm your host, Siegfried Trent, fresh from Long Beach, California, where I was enjoying a nice sunny vacation and uh, going to a friend's wedding, which was very cool. With us, we have lovely producer and wife, Anne Trent. Hello, darling. Hello. It's actually been two weeks because we couldn't broadcast last the Sunday prior to either of that as well. So, ah, real life drowning. <laughs> Yay. We missed a week of <laughs> fatigue and exhaustion, basically. We're just tuckered, playing tuckered out uh, that week and uh, didn't have time to do the podcast, so. Sorry about that, everybody, but uh, such is life. Um, however, that means we need to do another bonus episode before we hit number 300. Um, and uh, joining us at episode 300 uh, from ddogamer.com, we have Jeff Hanna. Hello. Hey, DDO world. How are you? Strange time of night. Yeah, here we all are. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, these are pretty late hours for Jeff, so we appreciate his uh, joining us uh, despite that. And uh, we also have with us the professor himself, Mr. Epic Education, Shamgar, who we also know as Patrick. Hey, man. Hey, hey folks. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and uh, thanks to the Mighty Cyber Ears for hosting our audio file. So they always give us a, a good deal on that, so we appreciate that. And uh, I'd like to give a shout-out to them. On the podcast this week, uh, we're going to make this a short one, generally speaking, because we're kind of here late at night. we got some game news, we got community news, and and we've got three, count them, three segments. OMG, uh, people have come through for us. So um, very much appreciate that. One, of course, from Shamgar himself. Uh, so thank you very much. But we've also got a top ten with Rebus the Rogue. Uh, making a reappearance on the show. Always pops up once in a while to entertain us, which is great. And Ludwig Beethoven brings us some amusing stuff. Uh, if you're listening to the live show, you won't hear those live, but you will hear them on the recorded show. So, And we also, at the end of the show, we've got some pretty big news about DDOcast itself. So stay tuned for that. At the very end of the show, we'll let you know what the mystery is. Uh, and um, very significant, so definitely worth checking out. All right, but well, we're going to start, as we usually do, with the game news for the week, or for the last couple weeks. Uh, servers went down on Monday, this AM, for Update 18 Patch 3, uh, which only has the following two things included. The Game Launcher has been updated to a new format. And boy, I hope it's working this time. Uh, and <laughs> I'm going to assume that it did, um, or assume that it will. Wait, no, that was today, so it should be back up. Has anyone tried it? I saw some yeah. stuff that people needed to restart their computer. Uh -huh. to work yeah. correctly, but, and I had to do that, too but bad. otherwise... Okay, I, cool. I can tell you that my gamer girl normally had to try to log in twice in order to get in at all, uh -huh. and, and that's not true anymore. So oh, I logged cool. her in the first time. It seemed to be a faster load time. She was, she, she was, she was impressed. Okay, very good. Excellent. They, they did progress. take out the uh, log into the previously connected world, though. Oh, interesting. Huh, very curious. Although sometimes that, that always got me a little confused when I was moving back and forth between Lamania and the regular client. I'm like, what, what, what? Where am I? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Also, they reor uh, let's see, uh, reordered back-end guild processing to address an issue where ex-guild members were not clearing off the roster after the standard grace period. Yeah, I think I saw some complaints about that. Good to know. All right, so that's all that was in there, at least all that we know about. Uh, speaking of guilds, a guild renames are now available again. Yay! Uh, we are pleased to announce that guild renames are available again. Previously, players had to pay twelve ninety five or eleven point four nine euros or nine point nine five pounds or something or <laughs> fifteen hundred and fifty turbine points for these renames. But uh, there will no longer be a cost associated with them. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, there will be offered. They will be offered free to players who are either VIP or premium players but purchase turbine points within the last 45 days. To submit a guild rename request, a guild leader will need to, res uh, to submit an in-game support ticket by pressing escape while logged in and then going to the help options. We don't yet have an ETA on when character undeletes or transfers will be available again. We will post any announcements about them as soon as we have them. So, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there were some jokes and some of our associated guilds about changing their, their guild names, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if people have taken advantage of that yet. Uh, let's see. Lamania updated. Check your emails. Shadowfell Conspiracy beta invites. Uh, Lamania server is now back online for a closed beta. They've also updated the NDA agreement at the top, so 
Uh, we've got to be careful what we share. Note. Uh, you may experience a bit of weirdness with your launcher as it updates. It may open two different launchers, one updating, and the other one says it is complete. If this does occur, wait for the updating launcher to update before logging in. All right, and then we've got a little link for that. Uh, and then we've got... Uh, <laughs> you'll have to forgive me. I, uh, Anne had to prepare all the DDO notes today because I had to come straight from work to do the show. So doing a bit of cold reading here. It says, does DDO cast count as press? Uh, you must feel must meet certain eligibility requirements to participate in the preview program. If you do not meet these requirements, you must refrain from using the game. Voluntary exclusion. To be eligible to participate in the preview program, you must, one, not be a principal agent or employee of a company that is a publisher, distributor, manufacturer, or a developer of video games other than Turbine, its parent affiliates, publishing partners, licensors, and licensees. Two, must not be a member of the press. Uh Uh-oh. And three, at least 18 years of age. Uh, Your participation in the preview program is purely voluntary, and you understand and agree that you will receive no compensation for your participation. Oh, I was expecting to be paid for that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So, yeah, you know, if if any of those apply to you, volunteer yourself not to do it, I guess. Um, Or just do it and don't tell anybody. It'll be fine. I'm not sure if uh, DDO cast counts as members of the press or not. I suppose technically we are. Um, we do, actually. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> I'm going to play it anyway. <laughs> well, it, it, it just, it, if you read the last line, this probably means DDO cast can't really report on things until the X-Pack itself is out or until we get our press tours with Turbine. So I'm hoping yeah, that's probably true. We'll, we'll probably get our press tours. And then we can report on it. <laughs> so. Yeah, we'll respect the NDA. I, basically, we'll just talk about things that are released on the official forums and, and, and that sort of thing. So yeah. so be it. Oh, we can say, hey, we're having fun, or things like that. But, um, <laughs> Probably has know. something or... to do with the contest they have, or the, the stuff they're giving away. Oh, yeah, there is that, too. Yeah, that's true. Um, oh, speaking of that, that's like the next line. Oh, yes. This probably means DDOcast may not be able to report in details. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, we will get that. I already next, said that. Next line. Ne- oh. Next line. <laughs> uh, okay. Here. Right. On. We're talking about the contest. You can enter DDO's <laughs> Shatterkai Design Contest uh, for your chance to win a custom-skinned Origin 800D computer, which I'm assuming is pretty good and won't try to kill you. It uh, is nice. Oh, yeah. It's nice. Cool. Oh, yeah. Let's see, DDO fans, uh, it's time to show off your artistic and creative skills. We're giving you the opportunity to submit your very own design for a facial tattoo, which could be taken and implemented into the game as a character creation appearance option for the new Shadar Kai Iconics in the Shadowfell Conspiracy expansion. Below, you will find the design template to use when creating your new, unique design. Please note you need, only need to complete the design box to complete a successful entry. The character portrait... Uh, angles are there for additional details on how your design would lay out on the face. Mm-hmm. If you wish to provide that to help our judges understand your vision. Uh, our panel of judges includes DDO developers and members of the Wizards of the Coast team such as Eric Glynn Boyer, senior produ- DDO producer, uh, Dan Hard, a DDO lead artist, Dan Gellin, the senior art director at Wizards of the Coast, and John Schindelhut. Schindel, et a, something like that. Senior Creative Director at Wizards of the Coast. We'll just call him John. Uh, valid areas of customization on the character face include forehead below the hairline, eye and nose region excluding the eyeball, chin region above the neck excluding the lips, cheek area forward of the ears, and color of the design. It must be a single color and 100% opaque. For some inspiration to guide your creations, please see some of the existing Shatterkai designs currently planned for Shadowfall Conspiracy. And finally, in addition to having a tattoo design immortalized in the live game, the winning entry will also receive a Shadowfell Conspiracy skinned Origin 800D PC valued at $3,888.74. Okay, yeah, that must be one awesome computer, because that's a big price tag. Uh, it's a, a live- big price tag. Yeah. That's a big price tag. It, yeah. That's nice. Neat. A uh, lifetime subscription to DDO and a unique community forum title of Master of Pain. Sweet. Uh, two runners-up will also be awarded a lifetime subscription for DDO and a community forum title of Acolyte of Pain. That's a really cool contest. I like that a lot. Me too. I've entered it four times so far. Uh, excellent. Excellent. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Not, not really with fun. anything useful or good, but nonetheless... I'm hoping that quantity will make up for a lack of quality. 
you, well, you never know. I mean, maybe you just you, some it speaks to someone, right? And they're like, "Whoa, hey, check that out." Yeah, you can never tell with something like that. So, hmm. neat. Yeah, that's really cool. All right, uh, what else we got? Store news: twenty-five percent off of stat tomes, veteran status, and more. July twelfth through eighteenth. Medium Slayer count boost use coupon B A M eighty nine one per account. So. Yeah, I like the Slayer boosts. They're kind of fun. Especially when you get the Rat Pile and the Necropolis. Then it's like, sh- ding, 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 ding. That's awesome. Uh, also, uh, they're ha- AKA the Pay to Win sale. <laughs> okay. Oh, because of Stat Tomes. But yeah, yeah, that's true. Points for your character. Uh, today is the last day for a Big B's hand box. Uh, eight ninety nine five turbine points uh, for some great items. Yep, the Big B's thirty nine ninety five. Thirty. What did I say? She said eight. Eight? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Thirty nine ninety five. Only 3,995 turbine points. So what is that? It's like um, kind of 40 bucks-ish, something around there. Uh, you get a stone of change. That The main thing is you get a stone of change that takes you from 7 to 15, I believe it is, instead of the 8 to 16 on the other ones. Right. Yeah. Right. And a bunch of tomes and, and an option for a pet and some other things like that. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good deal. A little bit cheaper than the other box. The stone isn't as good though. It, right. Uh, the previous, the other stones that we've seen previously, uh, the XP will get boosted by any boosts you have going. Oh really? Like these ones, I guess, don't. Huh. Not, I haven't tried either one, so I'm not entirely sure. But. Yeah, I guess that's possible. You know, I mean, as a veteran, I should have boosts on everything. But when I when I used one of the stones, because I did buy a box, it took me straight to exactly level 16. I didn't get anything extra, so I'm not sure. That sounds a little odd, but... Yep. I, think no, it, it works. I think it was the XP pots and yeah. the, the XP shrine kind of thing. Oh, okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all the boosts apply. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Uh, yeah, the, I, yeah, technically these are less XP. Although, from my perspective, in a way, I, ca- I can make characters at level 7. So that means I can just make a character at level 15 instead of having to gain a level in between. So there's a certain amount of convenience to that. But yeah, technically it's less Doesn't XP. that level so hard to gain? Yeah... I'm just lazy. That's all, you know. But I wonder if you get the same items or not. I have no clue. Not that the items are really great or anything, mind you, but hmm, something. Yeah, I don't, and I don't know that we got any clear explanation for the devs why they decided to do that one different than the other one. It may well just be a let's see which one sells better kind of a thing. I don't know. The other thing I noticed with the the Big Bees box was that you could only trade it once. Oh, interesting. That was in the description. I didn't really see anyone talk about it, but... Yeah. Huh, only transferable one time. That's really weird. So I guess it binds on trade or something strange like that? Something to that effect, which would keep it from becoming a a currently tradable item like the autos boxes kind of did. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they totally became that uh, before very long, so... How oh, interesting. I do remember a post as I was uh, mucking about on the forums uh, about a week and a half or two weeks ago where they were asked if uh, the autos boxes would come back, and they said maybe, uh, that they might both be available at the same time in some cases. They're not sure. So um, it's not clear that this is entirely meant to replace the other one. I think it's just a, something else they're trying. I don't know. Marketing people, they're cagey. Spent much of my day trying to make them happy today, so... <laughs> And they're wonderful. Used to that. They're, they're wonderful folks. <laughs> well, they, they are great in the sense that they make money, right? And money is what I get paid by. So that's good. I like it when they do their jobs well. I'm happy to help them out for that reason. But uh, th- there's always a bit of a bridge between the technical group and the marketing group in any company. It's, uh, <laughs> that's, it's about as far as apart as, as two groups in the company can be often in, in the way they think and operate. So it could be a challenge. Uh, so what do we got going on, uh, DDO Gamer this week? For the last couple well, of weeks? Uh, yeah, it's been a couple of weeks. Uh, the people who are not me are contributing about 40% of the content. That's a, I like that. More is better, but 40% is way better than me carrying the load by myself. So once again, thank you, people who are not me. Please keep it up. <laughs> um, I wrote, I went kind of all over the place in the last couple of weeks. There's one article I think worth talking about, though, and that is, I, I took another character and ran her up using the new enhancements and compared the original version and the and the newly enhanced version, and, and that seems like, like like something we're talking about for a couple of minutes anyway. Definitely, uh, she's a crowd control wizard. Um, 
and it, so this was kind of a different, you know, I've already, I did a, a, a sorcerer that nukes, but this is different. Um, this one's goal is to be party support, primarily. She's not a great soloer. Uh, it's already understood that at Epic Elite, she's going to be kind of limited because it's on her first life, and you can't really crowd control stuff on your without uh, several past lives worth of additional DCs to help with that. But that's short totally of Epic not Elite, true. You just have to be more creative. Uh, well, yes, I, I get that. Okay, so she's a crowd control wizard. She does the best she can. She's always supplemented it though with having the ability to do some pew 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 on the side or something. You know, just in case she gets bored or she's not able to land anything on whatever it is that she's facing. Um, so anyway, that's the background on her. Head into the new enhancements. Uh, this character had the most changes that I've encountered so far. So part of that is because the spell critical line is pretty much just gone now. Uh, but most of it was, you know, the, the continuing unbundling that Turbin is doing with the, the prestige enhancements. It used to be qualify for a prestige enhancement, and you get a whole series of things out of that. And that's not true anymore. Now you have to purchase each individual thing, each individually. Uh, so, and in order to get to the, the Archmage, which is plus two to, D, to int, and, you know, pretty critical for the build, I had, I had to take a bunch of spell-like abilities. In the past, she had skipped on those. Mainly she preferred the spell points, but there was no choice anymore. If she wants to get that plus two int, and she did, then she had to take five spell-like abilities in her enchantment specialized class. So, I mean, there's one of the spells that's there was one she normally casts anyway, hypnotism, not because things get hypnotized very much, although they do, but because it takes three off of the opponent's will save. So if you're ever having trouble landing stuff, you know, like you got mass holds and you're not getting good results, spam out a hypnotism first and then the mass hold, and it's amazing how much of a difference it makes. So getting that as a spell-like ability will be a plus. On the other hand, you know, resistible dance. I mean, who casts that? It can be resisted. <laughs> I want irresistible dance. So then the other spell-like abilities, you know, Kind of a waste of APs, but hey, whatever. So by the time it was all said and done, and again, the goal was to make her as close as I could, well, you know, I just couldn't spend the points on Archmage-based stuff. There just wasn't enough stuff to buy, even after having bought the stuff that I didn't really want. So she was kind of forced to branch out a little bit, build up her dexterity, add some extra saving throws, because she had these points, and you got to do something with them. So she came out of the ringer more resilient, but probably a little bit less effective as a caster. So she lost one point of intelligence. She lost 180 spell points. Her spell power for her backup, which is lightning, her backup is lightning damage. Her spell power is about the same. Her spell critical is down, though, so her nuking will be a little bit affected. Her hit points are up a little bit. Hmm. Um, and it could be that that spell point drop, which was 180 points, and that sounds like a lot, but she had 2,800 points. So that's really only about a 4% drop. And one of the things that she, again, had by that she would have never been able to afford before is a bunch of improved metamagics. So she's going to get her spells, they're going to cast a lot cheaper than they used to, and that 180-point drop might actually be a wash. She might actually get more spells now than she used to. Hmm. So overall, you know, I think she's going to be just about as good as she used to be, but a little bit different and probably quite a bit more survivable. Hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> so cool. there's that. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, I, I think the, the game of uh, doing the comparisons is... Uh, I don't know, I actually find it kind of fun to see, see what you end up with, just because different system makes you go in slightly different directions, even though you have the same goal, end goal. <clears throat> Uh, you know, I actually wanted, uh, Shamgar, you were mentioning uh, creativity in crowd control, which I think is, is kind of an interesting tactic, or topic, I should say. Um, one thing I've always done, and, you know, this is really kind of critical in regular D&D, &D, especially when you have very limited spells. Um, yeah, usually the tactic for control spells is you want to have a general idea of what kind of saves the monster's weak against and definitely hit him on that stat, like, you know, not casting fort save monsters at, at big ogres. Uh, you want to use will saves on those guys or reflex saves. And, and you don't want to use a reflex-based spell on the fire elemental because it's just going to dodge out of the way, that sort of thing. Um, and in DDO, I've had mixed success with that, so, sometimes because I just don't know 
what the saving throws on the monsters are, although the monster manual can sometimes help you with that. Um, and sometimes because, you know, at a certain level, there just isn't a really great spell against a particular uh, uh, defense for a particular kind of caster, or the, because of the school specialization, you end up, you know, if you're enchantment, it's almost all will-based stuff, and so you have a little bit of trouble finding a, a good dex-based spell. It depends, but... Um, I wanted to get your take on on some of the tricks that you think are useful for that. Well, one is you, like you're saying, it's useful to know what you're fighting against. So if you see an arcane caster, you know you can pretty much bet that they're going to have a lower fortitude save, um, or you know a divine caster tends to have a lower reflex save. Uh, so you can kind of learn what general types have what saves. You can look at a monster manual to kind of get a better idea for some of that as well. Mm -hmm. Both the one in game, or you can look at just the pen and paper one. Will kind of give you a pretty good idea of what's going on. Things to know are like what has spell resistance, what spells actually use spell resistance. Um, so like stuff like that is good to know. Like like drow, particularly in uh, Menace of the Underdark, uh, are really hard to crowd control because they have really high spell resistance. Um, so if you're trying to use spells that have really high spell resistance, you need to kind of be aware of that. Um, and there's also, you can be creative by using spells that don't have saves. Irresistible Dance, for example, uh, or mm -hmm. use debuffs, like Jeff mentioned. Uh, Hypnotism is a great, cheap debuff. You can cast that out, you get a minus three to will save anything in the area, and then cast, this, cast your enchantment spell, and you're in pretty good shape. Yep. Um, but, yeah, you uh, can throw like a really powered down version of Hypno if you want, if you don't care if that actually lands, yeah, you know, exactly. just to make it not cost very much. Yeah, yeah, level and, drain is good for that too. When, yeah, level drain. Um, but I, I remember back when epics were kind of new, and there wasn't the different uh, difficulty levels in epic. It was just epic, uh, and it was epically hard for the most part. Uh, we did uh, Devil's Assault, um, like right after it got made into epic, uh, and we had a crowd control wizard that uh, just didn't do it. He, he couldn't do it uh, for whatever reason. Uh, his saves weren't there, or he wasn't creative enough, or whatever. Uh, and I came in and gave it a whirl on my sorcerer, and you know, after about three minutes, I pretty much determined that all I could do was an irresistible dance and everything. So I literally spent the rest of the quest irresistible dancing pretty much every single trash mob I could find. <laughs> and it worked great! And we did fine, yep. and we got through the quest, no problem. So, you know, sometimes you have to be a little more creative, think outside the box. Don't Particularly one thing is, don't be a one-trick pony. Because yeah. when your trick doesn't work, if you're just a one-trick pony, then you're a useless pony. So try and you know be creative. Try something different. And you know, kiting is crowd control. It's <laughs> it can be, really yeah. basic, but it's crowd control. So Yeah, I've had some times with my Pale Master in a quest where... You know, they just, for whatever reason, everything is immune to anything he's really specialized in. And I've got some spells I could cast, but it's just not going to be very mana efficient. So I just whip out a big old sword, and I get in the monster's face, and I, you know, am as useful as I can manage to be, right? <laughs> the other thing, you know, another spell is uh, Symbol of Death is pretty good. Uh, it just, you run stuff through it, and it gives it negative mm -hmm. levels for the most part. So. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the best crowd control is, you know, I like the woo-woo stick from uh, the upgraded... Uh, dream Splitter mm -hmm. that has a chance of dropping a, 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 a level as it drain on to be, Not as good as it used to be, but I have one and I've had it upgraded. And uh, you know, sometimes the best crowd control is to keep your side hasted and raged, and you know, let them let them beat it down. Yeah, too. like you know, aggro management it can be key, and you know, heck, a sword and board tank can crowd control, intimidate, yeah. or even a non non sword and board, you know, just an AC tank, you know, intimidate. Make everything come after you. They can't hit you. Hey, you're crowd controlling. Yeah, so. totally. Cool. All right. Uh, well, we're going to we're coming up on our segment area. Like I said on the on the live show, not so much with the segments, but we're going to introduce each of them so Anne can assemble that together. So uh, first up, we're going to do Shamgar, uh, who's continuing with Caught in the Web, uh, Part Three in Epic Education Number Thirty Two. And uh, before we go with that. Um, since you're actually here live, Shamgar, I thought I would ask, um, I don't know, what's your overall impression of Caught in the Web? A lot of my guild uh, guildies really kind of don't like that quest at all and only run it begrudgingly. Uh, what's your take on it? Everything except for loss is fine. Um, I like that it's, it's kind of a long, it's kind of more of a quest than a one-room raid fight. 
Uh, it's got some interesting mechanics. I don't really mind shepherding Anna through the web. It's not really that hard, at least in my opinion, but I know people don't still have a bitter taste from coil in their mouth, so that's <laughs> fair. Um, but really, the, the biggest thing is, is Loth is just a disappointing raid boss, uh, particularly coming after uh, Lord of Blades and Master Artificer. She just stands there. She doesn't move. Uh, right after we got all these changes to AC and defenses, none of her attacks care. They just mm -hmm. hit you. It doesn't matter where you're standing. It doesn't. Well, it kind of matters where you're standing. There's a few places you can stand that's, that are viable, but your dodge doesn't matter. Your AC doesn't matter. Your spell resistance doesn't matter. If Asian, I think, kind of matters. But it's it was kind of a letdown. And then there's these invisible walls that you can't hit her with, and make things even more painful. It, it was not as well polished as we wanted. And really, the sad part is, is out of the entire expansion uh, for Menace of the Underdark, it was probably the biggest letdown. Yeah, I think it's probably true. So I mean, a lot of the quests in there are great. I, I really enjoy most of them. Um, but yeah. yeah, and I don't mind it too much. It does, you know, I don't mind running it. It doesn't. I've not run it a lot, so you know, I know people who really do the raids do them over and over and over again. And if uh, small flaws can become very annoying very quickly, so it doesn't bother me much. I definitely find. I don't mind the first confrontation with her because I kind of like the legs poking up out of the ground and stabbing people. That's kind of fun. Um, <laughs> Sorry, got carried away. <laughs> but but the last fight with her, I always find impression. I like kind that of one. confusing and perfunctory. <laughs> was that an impression? Was that what that was? <laughs> it's a lost impression in the rain. <laughs> Why is the cackling? <laughs> I've got my settings turned out because my connection's being lousy, so I don't have his video. I thought maybe he was milking a cat or something. <laughs> cat milking on DDO after the hour. Well, I am in Carolina, so you never know. Milking cats can break go. out at any minute. Yeah. I don't know. I think the biggest thing, the biggest thing with Loth is she doesn't move. She's not dynamic, uh, and her laser beams just hit you no matter where you are. Yeah. And they drain spell points at a very high rate. I mean, if you're doing it on hard, 400 spell points a zap. And yeah. you can't avoid it, other than yeah. hiding behind a rock, which, if there's a tell like Vela in uh, Plane of Night, sure, okay, that's no problem. You know, there's a big tell, go run and hide, sure. There's no real tell with Laws. She just shoots the same thing over and over again, unless you're maybe looking up at her at her face, which is, oh, I don't know, what, 200 feet ahead, above your head? <laughs> yeah. So it's it's just not a well-designed raid boss. It, Lord of Blades is, really, almost every other raid boss is better than her. Yeah, yeah. Even the Titan is a better raid boss <laughs> than her. And it has oh, no. the biggest, er or the poorest uh, margin of error out of any yeah. raid bosses. But it's a much more dynamic raid boss. <laughs> I, I don't hate Loth nearly as much as Shamgar does, but there is one part to that fight that is just incredibly annoying. There's a part where the melees are supposed to rudge up, run up to the edge of this cliff and beat on Loth, but all you can see is her stomach and these humongous, gigantic boobs. And <laughs> you're, I mean, they're towering over you. And I'm hitting away, and my top melee uses dwarven axes, and they don't reach her. I guess you need two-handed weapons to do any damage to her at all. So all these melees are sitting here furiously swinging away, and I do too because I don't want to look stupid, but I don't think I'm doing any damage at all. There's no numbers. There's, there is a trick to Just fight giant her, boobs. particularly on the second fight. You, you have to like find the one little tiny spot and then orient your character because facing matters at this point to, to find that spot where you can hit her reliably. And if, if you turn on your dice, if you don't have your dice on, you, you can watch your dice roll, and it'll tell you that you're hitting or connecting a lot more often. But oh, I've tried, uh, and I've tried, you know, incrementally moving every little. If I move any more, yeah. I'm going to fall off. And I mean, my head is inside try, her try stomach turning, now, turning and I'm still not doing any damage to her. Turning does a lot, and I've I've actually been able to finally get successive strikes on her, and I'm kind of facing almost probably I don't know 50 degrees off axis of her, so. Um, hit her cleave, on the cleave, and great cleave also tend to work, hit more reliably. But I probably never looked carefully enough to see whether I'm actually hitting her or not. I just sort of trust that 
<laughs> Jell in the right zone. Seems well, to be dying good. more or less. <laughs> yeah. I look good. I'm raged. You know, I'm furiously pounding away doing nothing at all. <laughs> Oh, but I mean, there, yeah, but there's there's also some really great things like the the whole end thing with the portal keepers is pretty interesting and and really demands a much higher degree of coordination, mm -hmm. which I kind of like. Um, yeah, and like no. I said, I I like the, the kind of overall route of the the quest. It's other than fighting Loth, I don't mind the quest, yeah. but fighting Loth is just there's too many screw you mechanics in it. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, now that uh, you've heard us all opine, uh, let's actually hear uh, Epic Education number 32. Hello and welcome to Epic Education, a show of tips and tactics for surviving epic content. I'm your guy Shamgar, and this is episode 32, Caught in the Web Part 3, Escaping the Web. Last time we got to the end of the raid. We have only two more islands to conquer, but they will be the two most challenging islands. We must again face Loth and her army of minions, a more powerful batch than the last fight. Additionally, we must break her barrier blocking the way to the portal out of the web. To break this barrier, we must first beat Loth back again, and then we must kill all of the portal keepers. Here's the catch. When you kill a portal keeper, the monsters in its vicinity become portal keepers. Here's the second catch. When you kill portal keepers, more will spawn with an accompaniment of guards. To escape, we must kill the last two or three portal keepers in a short time frame. An uncoordinated party will find themselves indefinitely trapped in the web. There are three islands on which this final fight will take place. The island we are currently on is protected from lost lasers because of its roof and wall structure, but you may have to deal with spell ward traps. Up the ramp to the west is the large island. On the south end of the island is a portal keeper necromancer and a host of other mobs. On the north end of the island is another pile of mobs and loth. In the center are the ramps to the adjoining islands and the fourth and final orb, which is optional. The last island is a rather small and generally has a portal keeper on it. This is where the portal out is, currently blocked by a barrier and is to the west of the large island. When the portal keepers are killed, after about 10 seconds more keepers and mobs will spawn from one of four locations. The bottom island, the top island, and the north and south ends of the large center island. Before you take down the last portal keepers, make sure Anna's babysitter is on the top island ready to run through the barrier as soon as it's down. There are a couple of ways to approach this fight. The biggest thing that needs to happen is we need to take Loth down. Everything gets a lot easier once this happens. Before we can attack Loth, Anna needs to get close enough to shoot her. Unlike the first fight, this can be done before destroying the orb. It is certainly possible to bomb rush Loth and her minions, and kiting is certainly a good option for trash mobs. There are, however, a pile of mobs to deal with, and that can become problematic, especially with lag being a concern. One approach is to assign two or three players to deal with trash. This should be a fairly self-sufficient team. They can kill all the trash and prep the last two or three portal keepers. If done well, this can make for an extremely short loth fight. The biggest problem in this case might be getting Anna up to the barrier. Consider having someone from the trash party or a self-sufficient range type take Anna here. The danger here is that in this can be easily overwhelming task. If you aggro too much at once, especially in mistresses, you may find that you have to resort to kiting. It's important that these folks dealing with trash don't pull more than they can handle, because if they die, all of that trash will head over to the rest of the group. If your group uses this approach, I highly recommend that you encourage them to pull new mobs only when they have portal keepers left to play with, and only if they can take the extra heat. A different approach is to make an effort to achieve what I call a stable point. This is where new mobs are not spawning and you can control the, of the mobs that are left. Once you get to this point, you can go to town on Loth with far fewer concerns and put more of your group's weight behind beating her down. To get to this point, there's basically two extremes. The first is to aggro everything and work down to a stable amount of portal keepers. It can be difficult to do this with Loth shooting you, however. The other extreme is to aggro as little as possible. You can of course do some of both, however I recommend aggroing as little as possible. To elaborate, I will go through this fight step by step according to my preferred method, which can easily be applied to all difficulties and should make for a fairly simple boss fight. This should give you at least a starting point and can be easily modified to fit your group preferences. As a reminder, last episode we ended by clearing out the trash on the bottom island, so let's pick it up from there. Start by having the person with Anna run about halfway up the ramp. Once Anna gets far up enough up the ramp, you will get some DM text and a dialogue from Loth. This signals the start of the end fight. 
Head back down the ramp and clear out all the trash that has spawned, even the portal keepers. You should be able to kill everything here and achieve a stable point relatively quickly. I typically have my groups take their second and final shrine here. Once you are ready to continue, send one or two people up the ramp to collect some mobs. The trick here is only to grab the mobs at the center and to the north of the island. That's to the right as you reach the top. You don't need to grab everything all at once, but do try to grab any Bebelists and Mistresses in this area. However, do not grab anything from the south part of the island. Bring what you have aggroed back to the bottom island. You may want to do this more than once, and you will probably have to contend with a few respawns before again reaching a stable point. Hopefully you will get to a point where you can have a pulled and killed almost everything on the north half of the center island, but everything from the south half and the top island are still just hanging out in their locations. It is possible that you will not be able to reach a stable point here, especially if you goofed and pulled the mobs to the south. If this becomes apparent, try to get as close to one as possible. Perhaps you should save a few couple portal keepers here. When you get to as stable a point as you can, it's time to go after Loth. At this point, everyone should go up the ramp and hang an immediate right. Again, we don't want to aggro either the south center island or the top island. There may be a few mobs here for you to clean up. Kill anything that isn't a portal keeper at this point, but as soon as the main party is able, they should get on Loth. Assign two or three people to handle trash, probably casters and sufficient folks. It's up to them to either kite or kill whatever comes to the north part of the island. Hopefully you will be able to achieve a stable point and the only trash you will get will be that which Loth herself spawns. Anna's babysitter can either go to get the orb during the Loth fight, again be careful not to attract unwanted attention, or you can just wait until Loth is down. Melee will need to pay careful attention to where they stand. The area around Loth is full of invisible objects and this makes attacking Loth very difficult. Find a place where you can confirm you are consistently getting your normal attacks to land. You can check this by watching your die rolls or your combat log. Range folks should pull in tight with the melee to stay in mass secure range unless they are on trash. I find as a caster that dropping a cloud kill on the melee is an effective way of getting spider aggro, though cleaving melee can easily kill these mobs as well. In any case, DPS should throw as much as they can at Loth. Unless a wiper retreat is imminent, try to get Loth down as fast as possible. Loth can sacrifice mobs, so you will need to either kill what is in the area or take it farther away out of her sacrifice range, which is fairly small. Once Loth is down, we need to kill trash and get down to two or three portal keepers. If the orb isn't down yet, get that done now. At this point, go ahead and aggro everything to the south and top islands. You can do this in stages. I recommend that you bring everything to the center big island. Some groups like to pull everything up to the top. This does have its advantages, namely that you can buy yourselves a few extra seconds to kill portal keepers before trash gets close, enough to become a portal keeper. However, the top island is rather small, and Anna will get dinged up a bit. If she is borderline, this decision could be the difference in getting a well-earned chest. Once the trash is pulled down to the center island and the orb is destroyed, the baby shader should move to the top island. It is highly likely you will have only a minimal amount of time to rush through the barrier once it goes down, so be ready. Everyone else should be working on portal keepers. Keep in mind here that your healers may be very light on spell points. This is the portion of the raid that most groups will find the greatest difficulty. It requires a concerted effort towards group coordination. Even one person can seriously impede success here. There's also a little bit of luck involved. Some of these mobs will prove to be far more difficult than others. The mistresses are the biggest problem because they can sacrifice any mobs that are not other mistresses to heal themselves, even portal keepers. If you do have a mistress portal keeper left, you may want to try and make the other last keeper or two either another mistress or something that's an undead soul. Also, keep in mind that Bebelus and most of the drow and spiders come back as undead versions. While it may seem difficult to do, trying to pick a good combination of portal keepers can be the key to success here. Alternatively, you can separate them and kill them far apart from each other. This can prevent mistresses from sacrificing the other and will prevent the undead versions from becoming portal keepers when the second keeper is killed. You can also kite trash mobs around to prevent the same from occurring. The mobs spawning at the bottom platform are particularly good candidates. The most important thing here is communication and coordination. Try and take down the portal keepers together. It's also worth noting that portal keepers do have map notes. If you open up your map, you can see them as red dots. It's also possible to get one of the demons that teleports to teleport back to the res shrine as a portal keeper and turn a mob there into a portal keeper. This, of course, should be avoided. Should you run into trouble, you may need to retreat or even regroup by jumping off as ghosts to res back at the other end of the demon web. If during this process you find that Anna is below 70%, 
don't be afraid to use another shrine. You've already lost your chest. If Loth is still up, keep in mind that she does regenerate over time, so try not to dilly-dally. That will end this week's Epic Education. If you have any questions, comments, or corrections, you can email me at ddoepiceducation at gmail.com or visit my DDO blog at shamgar.ddocast.com. Join me next time as I begin discussing Fall of Truth. And we're back. Thank you very much, Amgar, for uh, the uh, the educational exercise. Uh, we'll use that knowledge next time we're in there. Uh, and next up, uh, we have the ever enigmatic Ludwig Beethoven, who is returning with a cryptic message uh, as a kind of in between segment aperitif. Uh, so we'll hear that now. Russian Prince Productions presents Drag on Fragments from Eberon's Past. With all the attention of late bequeathed upon the lowly collectible, I have decided to delve into the archives to share with you a little brown bubble from my own personal experience, salvaged from the sewers of that private stash, tossed away and all but forgotten. Here I ask the question that has not been asked in over 292 episodes of Didio Cast. How many times during an adventure, Corthos, Harbor, Restless Isles, Chanticore, and Splinter Skull, have you stopped, thrown down your pack in disgust, and gone in after that cryptic message? plucked from your fingers by the blue jean genie of expeditious filing and retrieval that lives in all our packs. Ludwig is a firm believer that the cold blood of knowledge can be sucked from the words or symbols of any cryptic message. His usual method to this end, after spanking the blue genie, is to submerge himself in the frantic, nervous energy of the under-medicated creation fairies, and then proceeding straight to jumping in and out of the box many times. I present to you now one such cryptic message to benefit from Ludwig's thrice over. Male, elf, drow, 427 years old, seeks full-time employment, hard worker, specializing in the point-to-point -point sanitary transportation of fruit and cheese. During the final years of the drow enslavement, I was known throughout the castle as the go-to elf for all things grape. Purple, green, champagne, or seedless, it was my sworn duty to provide a steady supply of grapes to the master and his guests. All day long, day after day, week after week, mouth after mouth and into the ears. I carried one, sometimes two, grapes at a time. Cryptic schmiptic. Nothing more than a simple, if ancient, request for employment. Yours truly, Ludwig Bait Hoven. Repeat after me. Ludwig Bait Hoven. Rhymes with oven. Carol Burnett had one. Donnie and Marie, too. And what about Sonny and Cher? Why can't I have a theme song? to say goodbye with at the end of the night. Wait a minute, I do have one. Pieces of a story, the beginning or the end of a scene, real or imagined. Flip in, remark, outright dismission, directional concession of the chin. There is a truth at the core, I want to hear more. These are but a few of the fragments that we view. Drag on, drag on, drag on. Good night, Sig. Good night, Ed. Good night, everybody. See you pod next time. They said, see you pod next time. And then we will puzzle as to its meaning, which is really the intent of much of what Ludwig does. If you didn't 
if you haven't really caught on, a lot of the time he likes to, to layer in his little segments with kind of hidden meanings and references to the game or references to DDO cast or things like that. And part of the fun is uh, trying to puzzle out exactly what's going on. And once you start to clue into it, uh, it's actually a pretty fun game. You're like, ah, I, I know what he's talking about there. Or what in the world is that? Could that be? But there's almost always a meaning to his madness. So uh, that, that's just... that's me. If you're like me, the uh huh, what? Yeah, uh... and just gives up. <laughs> <laughs> translate, husband, translate. But I have tapped into the Ludwig Beethoven stream of consciousness, and when you do, it's a pretty fun ride. So. Uh, and next, uh, not quite so challenging, uh, is Rebus the Rogue, who has uh, suddenly stabbed like a knife in the dark out of the blue with a new top 10 list. So let's check that out. This week's top 10, the top 10 paid additions to DDO. These are things that I believe people would pay for. I would definitely pay for. Uh, I talked to some folks in my guild, some of my best friends that I play with. They all gave me input onto this list and uh, they all agreed that they would pay extra for these things. So, this week, the top 10 paid additions for DDO to make some more money. Number 10, item search across the server. Now, this means that I should be able to somehow type in the name of a piece of equipment, the name of an item, and that the search would look through all of my banks, all of my characters' inventory, the auction house, the chart, the shard exchange, and my shared bank, and it should return all the values, all the different places that I can find that specific item. Um, it would love to be able to search by, you know, disruption or the name of an item um, or type like a kopesh or a light hammer or whatever. But I'm just thinking about all the possibilities here. Not only would I be willing to pay extra for this service, but I think um, being able to search across your own inventories and then also in the auction house and the shard exchange, Turbine would be able to sink out some of the money in the system by showing you, hey, you can get this in the auction house. Hey, you can get this in the shard exchange. You can buy some shards from us and you can buy, uh, buy this item in the shard exchange. So. Number 10, the item search across the server. And I would pay something like a thousand turbine points for this, um, for this service. Um, maybe more, maybe more, maybe a monthly fee even. I might be able, I might even pay an extra like dollar a month or something um, to have this service attached to my VIP account. Number nine, um, I would love for this item search but also other things to be available to the web or and or my phone. I'd love to be able to see my inventories, my banks, look through the auction house, the shard exchange, move items back and forth between characters, bid on items in the auction house or the shard exchange um, through a web interface uh, or through my phone. And the reason is because I can't always be in the game but sometimes I have an idea and I want to be able to look for something or bid on something or move some things around and it would give me the ability to do that when I wasn't able to log into the game like say you know waiting in line at the DMV or some other place um, again I'd be willing to pay maybe thousand turbine points for this kind of a service or an extra dollar a month um, for a service like this number eight quest entrance warp so it could be like something you turn on in your account or something you pay for each time, um, but I would love to be able to just click on a, a, a quest in my quest journal and hit warp to quest entrance, and it just takes me right to the quest entrance um, to avoid all the running and running and running and running and running, which I don't find that um, fun, and I find waste my time, and I would like to not do it. So quest entrance warp and I'd you know I'd pay 10 turbine points per warp or maybe 20 um, or maybe to pay a, a larger sum like a thousand turbine points to just be able to do it whenever I wanted number seven mounts yeah 
let's get some horses let's get some something some some kind of mounts that we can uh, use to get around this place uh, uh, so you could get across a, a, an outdoor area faster like the Knights Forest gosh that place is big uh, they'll be able to jump on a horse and just speed through it so number seven mounts number six I would love to have cosmetics meaning like skins in the game for things like cloaks, cloaks, boots, and gloves. Again, I'd pay extra for this. Um, you know, like probably a lot so that I could have cool boots or cool gloves or a cloak um, flapping behind me. Uh, but I'd love to have those kind of cosmetics added to the game. Of course, I'd love more quests. That's always a given, and I definitely pay more for, for good quests. That's number five, more quests. Uh, number four is to be able to get a stone of experience at any time. Now, they go on sale, there are parts of these boxes that you can buy, but I wish we could just buy a stone of experience um, from the turbine store. And, you know, I'd pay like 2,500 turbine points for a stone of XP. That's number four, stone of XP at any time. Number three. A single click, uh, t a single click, basically a place on the guild ship where I just go to, I click on the one thing, and I get every ship buff that's on my ship. I would pay a lot for this because that would save so much time. Uh, it's just like the running around. It's like, really? I don't want to waste my time uh, running around the ship and getting these buffs. I would pay like 2,500 turbine points. Um, to have a single click ship buff that would give me all the buffs in the ship. Number two, um, I love these creature companions. They're great, but they don't add anything to the mechanics of the game. And I wish I could pay a little bit to have my creature companion just do something. You know, like the, the little things on favored soul shoulders. Um, they just do a little bit every now and again. But it'd be cool if, like, you know, the, the little my little uh, uh, cubs could jump up and you know hit a monster and do some damage depending on my level wouldn't have to be a lot but it'd be a cool little addition to the game that the little creature companions do it just a little bit of damage add a little uh, animation in there of them you know cub running up and slapping the monster or chewing on his ankle or whatever um, wouldn't have to be a lot of damage and I think it would add a lot to the game and number one, the number one paid edition, please stop poisoning my Warforged. I just, uh, that, that it, it makes me sick when my Warforged characters get poisoned because they're made of metal and dead wood. Mm. And the poisoning of Warforged just drives me up the wall. They're, they got nerfed enough as it is. Let's, let's get rid of the poison, please, and disease. Um, it's just silly. Anyway, that's my top 10 paid additions of the game. Developers, please, if you want to make some money, add some of these things. And I guarantee that current players will pay you lots of turbine points uh, to have them. That's it. And we're back. Always amusing, as always. Thank you, Rebus. <laughs> Much appreciated with the fun times. Uh, keep them coming. We always like to hear your top ten lists. That was, those were great segments. Thanks, guys. That was really fun. Awesome. It is fantastic. We are so happy to have segments on the show. Uh, they were requested, and uh, some of our longtime and most reliable folks have come through for us, so we very much appreciate that. And uh, I do believe there are some folks out there who still owe us a segment or two, so um, put up there, gentlemen uh, or ladies. Uh, we would like to hear them. And even if you don't know us a segment, send us a segment anyway, because we love segments. That's right. Uh, it is your chance to be a star. And you never know, you might end up with your own show, like uh, uh, um, Samus and Lessa and those guys. Or uh, I don't know. It's a lot of fun. You, can, you know, I, I find throughout life, very small decisions sometimes have far-reaching and interesting consequences. So the more things you get out there and try to do and take a stab at, uh, the more chance you have of having an interesting and cool life. So just a little... Worldly wisdom there for everybody. Um, if you always stay in your kind of day-to-day thing, eh, not much new will happen to you, which may be great. I don't know if you love everything that you do, but I think new opportunities are great. Okay, so uh, what have we been doing in DDO? Um, I'll start. Um, 
Yeah, not very much. Uh, <laughs> I've been playing with our with our uh, sort of static uh, TRA group, uh, so I've definitely been keeping up with that. But that's all about all I did this week in DDO. I've been swamped with work. I got a promotion, uh, and I have like 17 employees now, and all kinds of madness. So that is a whole ton that occupies my brain. And we were out of uh, town this weekend, so... Uh, lots of good stuff, but, uh, you know, that's pretty exciting, speaking of life opportunities. But it means a little bit less DDO time right now. So that's the way it goes, but, uh, I don't know, definitely looking forward to some more. I'm going to play a little bit tonight, definitely. So, uh, How about you, darling? Hey, I can hardly remember what I did last week, but uh, Ransom, I, I, I am a hireling in my TR group, so basically all I do is smush stuff. For my boss, so she can get XP points. <laughs> um, uh, what did we do? We didn't do Necropolis, which made me really happy. We did the Orchard. I like the Orchard. That's great. I know it's a part of the Necropolis line, but I put that in a separate category, which is very excellent, rather than very lame and boring and stupid as a part of the other Necropolis stuff. But Does anyways, that our goal. Inferno of the Damned. Um, yeah, I like Inferno. Yeah, I'll say one thing for the, the TR group. We've got a, um, you know, I'm with the Madborn, but we've got kind of an associate guild called the Dark Stars. And whilst they sometimes poo-poo their lack of sort of raid worthiness in some cases, they're not quite as much the epic elite raiders, they are damn fine quest runners, and they have almost every quest in the game down mm -hmm. to a bit of a, a detailed science. So we just sort of follow them through Inferno of the Damned, and they're like, okay, and then you go here, and then you flash this, and then you go here, and you kill these guys, and you just kill this guy, and then you step right over here on this square over here, and then you do this. And uh, so Even we just... Even Ghost of Perditions was really easy with them, because it's like, oh, hey, they know what they're doing. I just, I'll just do what I'm told I'm doing. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, I mean, they're like, so-and-so, did you bring the scrolls? Yeah, I got the scrolls. Okay, and they, they just run the quest. They know all the tricks, and uh, it's pretty fun. Actually learned a lot of stuff uh, running with those guys, so... They are fantastic quest runners. And I gain way more experience than I ever get running by myself or just with Anne, because they're very efficient. Too. They're like, we, no, we're, we're running it all on Elite Street. We're, we're riding the XP wave. Yeah, it's a good time. <laughs> That's what I like to say. So, uh, yeah. All right, Shamgar, uh, what have you been up to in DDO? Uh, not a whole lot. I get my favorite soul up to Blade Barrier level. Oh, so that's, that's picked things up a little bit. Yeah, it's been nice. But uh, I do a lot of umpiring with uh, Little League Baseball, uh, and it was tournament season the last couple weeks, so mm. I did something like 14 games in like eight days. Wow. So I was really busy. Cool. And I got like two months worth of sun. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. How about you, Jeff? Uh, well, I've been spending a lot of time planning a honeymoon that's coming up later this year, but my DDO time has been about half and half drawing tattoos and playing my amazing artificer. <laughs> who continues to amaze me. So I'm showing it one of the tattoo designs I submitted for the tattoo contest. It's fairly, well, dark <laughs> and featureless. <laughs> like I said, maybe. Uh, like well, I said, you know we're, what? We're, you know what? It fits because Shatter Kai are from the Shatterfell, and they usually either follow. They usually follow our, our acolytes of the the Raven Queen. So it's dark, oh, mysterious. Oh, Raven. You know, so you're. Wait a you mean like yeah, that? See? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. Oh. oh. So, so, so yeah. You, okay. you rocked it. You got it. Well, right. I think this one. Unfortunately, this one looks a little vaguely Hitlerian. I really should have just provided the the Raven and allowed allowed Turban to do the artist work of applying it to the face. I think. But anyway, so sometimes use and a whole lot of artificer who's now up to level sixteen and running elite giant hold and just continuing to kick ass. What a great character. Lots of fun to play. Very nice. Yeah, I've kind of felt the same way about my uh, Druid TR character. I just really enjoy the heck out of it. Also, also in, the, in the TR group, I got to play my Bladeforge character that I made, the Sorcerer uh, Paladin. Uh, that's a fun character, too. Very, very likable. Although, I have to say, I um, compared it to my Warforge favored soul, which is kind of like a you know, pure favored soul, but very two-handed sword focus, got power attack, and takes all the Blade Forge stuff. And wow, that character is awesome. Uh, you know, I can, I can whip out the Blade Barrier, I can do the point of light damage, and, you know, I could get, you know, good 120, 130 point crits off of the, the Great Sword at level 15. Uh, I love that character. Lots of fun. <laughs> Just a murder machine, um, which is kind of how I like him, real offensive. 
I, and I can heal people if I need to, when I remember. And that's nicely. <laughs> cool. Uh, community news. Uh, DDO Chronicle number 52 is out. Uh, Deadlock is keeping track of the new enhancement system in a very useful and very large PDF, uh, which is pretty cool. He's kind of saying, here's all the different bonuses you can get for your character and how you get them and where you get them and how much they cost and everything else. So he is uh, really doing the crunchy business um, with the enhancement system update, so that's cool. 46 he... pages. He did 46 pages. It's really insane. You should check it out. It's really useful, yeah, but four, I... 46 pages... <laughs> Yeah, it was too much for me. I peeked at it. I'm like, eh, uh, okay. Uh, I'll mostly just puzzle it out when the, when it comes out. Because yeah, every character will have slightly limited choices, so I'll just pick from those. I applaud a fellow for Bose writer. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. I mean, he's kicking yeah. ass. So It's diagrams. 46 pages of diagrams. <laughs> That's hard. I was stunned. I was, I was stunned. But we I, love it. Uh, I haven't done any, a lot of diagrams, but some of the, the little blurbs I write up have turned out to be like 30, 40 pages. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I remember trying to get into stuff, and this was, you know, back when things were much simpler. I'm like, I'm going to write about armor class. And then, oh, my God. I'm like, all right, I'm going to write about something about armor class, just a narrow <laughs> area of armor class. Because, oh, my gloves. God. I'm going to write about gloves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, every year you have to get a little narrower if you want to keep the keep the size of the thing down a bit. There's just so much stuff. All right, uh, Vanshalar uh, has written a very comprehensive guide to the tile puzzle in the Accursed Ascension raid. Tile puzzle in the Accursed Ascension. Oh, okay. Goggles is usually what it's called. Okay, yeah. The gog- oh, very good. Yeah, that's the one that needs it. I found that to be very challenging indeed. And hard to describe. I'll have to, have to check it out. Yeah, you have to, I think, be very comprehensive if you want to describe it well. Um, uh, critical comment, uh, fill in the rest of this famous saying, when life gives you undead beholders, blank. Uh, and uh, I will say, run like hell. Yeah. <laughs> or or uh, go get your local uh, Hunter of the Dead Paladin, because when I had one of those, I laughed at undead beholders. I'm like, ha, 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 you can touch me with nothing. I'll just sit here and beat on you until you're dead. Um, but uh, I don't know, Jeff, uh, how do you, uh, what do you do when life gives you undead beholders? I think that's a time to start questioning the choices you've made in your life. You have to ask yourself, <laughs> how, what, what series of things did I do that put me here surrounded by undead beholders? It's a time of reflection. <laughs> a very short time of reflection. <laughs> uh, Shamgar, what do you say? Let the barbarian go first. <laughs> Good idea. Uh, Anne? Oh, um... When life gives you undead beholders, make beholder butter. Tasty mm. and delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Good plan. Good plan. Undead beholder butter. Great, <laughs> great for topical anesthesia. <laughs> yeah, you're a nice roast beef sandwich, you know. Mm. There you go. All right. What else we got? Uh, new Shadowfell conspiracy screenshots are available over at 10tonhammer and massively.com. So you can see some of the some of the new monsters are really pretty cool looking. So, um, yeah, if you're curious, I would definitely go check it out. Of course, you can get yourself on Lamania and see them yourself. I guess you had to have pre-ordered in order to do that. Clues to beta and all that jazz. Which I, I can't say I've actually downloaded yet, but I'll get around to it. And if I don't, I'll blame it on the uh, the requirements that I'm not allowed to. So... <laughs> I well, have I do that. I'm press. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, it, it would be wrong for me to look at that. Uh, all right. Other gaming news: twenty questions with Lotro Dev Team. Uh, so if you play Lotro, uh, that looked pretty cool. It was kind of a Q and A. They got twenty questions. They they went pretty deep on stuff, talking about the licensing for Lotro, um, which they said, yes, we'll have the licensing for quite some time. We have a very good relationship with those guys, and it's not a problem. Um, along with a bunch of other questions about technical things in the game, all sorts of stuff. It was a very good Q&A. I'd love to see them do uh, something similar over on DDO. That would be nice. Hit, hit, oh, which they have please. done from time to time. But, yeah. <laughs> we want we'll more. do time for another. Once a month, please. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, if they had something <laughs> like that. That would be super cool. Just saying. Okay. Speaking of super cool, um, we have come towards the end of the show, and we have our... Big surprise announcement, um, which, uh, good news, bad news, depending on the way you look at things, uh, but uh, I think it's a cool thing, and that is that Anne and I will be retiring from DDO Cast. As of episode 300, our uh, Gen Con 
Splash event will also be something of our farewell song as host of the show. Um, so we've been doing it since just a little bit before episode 200, so 100 shows is quite a lot, let me tell you. <laughs> and um, it's just time for us to kind of move on and do some other things. Not that I'm going to stop playing DDO, got no plans on that. And uh, not that I won't participate in the show at all. I, I plan on being as helpful as possible and uh, coming on from time to time or whenever uh, I am desired. But uh, not going to be the host, and uh, Anne will not be the producer. And instead, uh, we have Stepping Up to Take the Reins uh, for, I guess what you might call, DDO Cast's third uh, consecutive life. Uh, it, when it goes down, it gets reincarnated again. It's TRing. <laughs> it's a third TR. <laughs> That's right. This is TR number three. Coming in uh, with more stat points than ever before, we have uh, Shamgar. Uh, so, man, I don't know what to say, but thank you so much for picking up the reins. We put out kind of some feelers. We let people who were close to the show know that we were doing this to see if anybody wanted to pick it up. And uh, Shamgar stepped forward and said, I'll do it. So, man, I, I can't tell you how uh, grateful we are for uh, carrying on the tradition. Now, uh, you know, every time uh, we pass the torch, it becomes somebody else's show, and... Uh, they have license to do with it uh, as they please, and I'm sure Shamgar will have some changes he's going to make in both when he does the show and how it happens. Um, but, you know, the spirit of the thing is a, you know, I don't know, it's a service to the fans, and something fun for a hobby that we love uh, is not going to change. So, I don't know. So, uh, what would you like to say, uh, Shamgar, to, to tell folks? First of all, can we not call it a third life? Because that's the <laughs> hardest one. It requires the most experience. That's true. <laughs> and yeah. I don't know about that one. But uh, I think the biggest thing to tell people is uh, this is your show. Like this, We don't do this to entertain ourselves. Um, we do this to – well, we do this partly to entertain ourselves. But we do this because uh, there's some really awesome listeners, and uh, we like doing it for you guys. Um, but, you know, I, do, do a little math here with me. There's Anne and Sig, and that's going to be going down to me, which is less. Um, and, you know, I'm a busy guy. So please help be involved with the show. Um, you know, it's your show. So, you know, I, I encourage you and invite you to be a part of it uh, more than just listening. Listening is great. We want you to listen. Um, but, you know, I get involved. Give us some segments. Um, you know, if you see news articles or something, feel free to – to send us, uh, send DDOcast an email, ddocast at gmail.com. Um, there's a survey uh, we've got for you to, to we're going to ask people to fill out, uh, and there's some turbine points to give away associated with doing that. Um, we'll, we'll give you some more information on that uh, throughout the week and in the coming months. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, do a segment, uh, even if it's just a one off, but uh, tell people about the show. I invite you to get involved and to, to help support the DDO cast. Yeah, and you know, every time people step up and help out, it always makes the show better. Uh, the stuff people email us, and I, I can't stress enough, it's really helpful when people send in news tips. Like, they, hey, my guild is doing something on this server, or hey, uh, you know, I thought it would be really cool if DDO cast talked about X. I always find those things incredibly useful. You know, we don't always do them that show, because it, it takes a little while to kind of ram things together, but Man, it's super helpful. Uh, it just makes makes the job of doing the show a lot easier. Yeah, and I always I always like it when people write letters to us telling their point of view of a particular particular topic because we have one point of perspective, and it, to get a, a more rounded point of view of the game, it it helps to have these different points of view of the game just through an email. You can even leave a message, but you know, a voicemail or do whatever, or even write a blog post on your own blog, send us a link and we'll share it. We'll, we'll read it and, and give it out because we're, we're like that. Cause it's fun like that. Cool. All right. So we'll, there will definitely be more of that, uh, coming along. Uh, unfortunately, Patrick won't be able to join us for show number 300. He just won't happen to be in Gen Con. Um, but, uh, but he'll be on the show, uh, whenever he can make it. And, uh, and afterwards, uh, you know, I'll be on the show as well, and Anne will come on occasionally. We'll still be helping out a little bit, but um, it's going to be under uh, new leadership, and hopefully, I'm hoping, a renewed surge of fan participation, because that would be... Yeah, I think, I think, I hope, I hope since we've got, like, a different leader that we can get new blood in and see what people are up to in the game, because, hey, new stuff is cool. Excellent. 
Um, just, yeah, I don't know. Can't, can't express uh, thanks enough, Shemgar. It's, uh, it would be one thing to leave the show and kind of know that we're closing the doors. And uh, it would be bittersweet. You know, I would still have very much enjoyed my time. But uh, to be able to, to leave it in somebody else's hands is really cool. Um, makes, <laughs> makes leaving that much easier. And, Yay! Um, yeah. Three cheers for Shamgar! Yay! Huzzah! Savior of DDO cast! <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. No, that's a Don't cool thing. sink the ship. Yeah. Well, like I said, you know, uh, we handed head, put up our hands very tentatively. We're like, oh, uh, maybe if nobody else will, I guess we could do it. And it turned out to be a lot of fun, and, and we had a good time. And we got pretty much nothing but, but, uh, Love and help from other people, so that's real cool. And I think we're going to leave that uh, on that note for today's show. So a uh, big thanks to Anna and Jeff for joining me today, and mega huge thanks uh, to Shamgar for joining us and uh, carrying on the tradition. And uh, to all the current DDO cast contributors out there, uh, Ludwig and uh, Rebus the Rogue, thank you so much for sending in segments. And to everybody who listens to the show and those who will be contributing in the future, we salute you as well. And Turbine and Wizards for making a great game that we like to play. If you want to be a part of the show or just say hi, you can call us at 707-DDOcast or email us at ddocast at gmail.com. Until next time, mail your attack rolls, be crits, all your chess level appropriate, have fun, and don't forget to help DDOcast. Cast.